it's some of the most touching music I think of in any concerto written for the violin, and, and I think I think some of Schumann's greatest uh, greatest music. The particularly the slow movement I think is 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 just uh, perfect, and it's 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 so it's very inward and very. Um, so beautiful, but it's 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 difficult. Again, it's difficult to play because it's not always just one mood. It's not an obvious, just a pretty piece. It's 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 always several things at once. Herr Schumann, it was very painful for me. His eyes were moist. He spoke continuously, but I couldn't tell what he was saying. I made out the names Marie, Julie, Berlin, Vienna, England, but not much more. Dr. Ricards says that Schumann's brain is decidedly exhausted. At best, he will remain in this significantly apathetic state. In one or two months, only supportive care will be possible. She never visited him in the asylum until two days before he died. I mean, was that just because the doctors told her not to, or again, do you think there was a stigma I th of I th madness? I think that this was a woman who followed the orders of the doctor. I, 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 it, hard as it is, is to believe. I, I think that she uh, was forbidden by the doctors to go. She wanted to go several times, spoke to the doctors, and they felt that it would be very difficult for him to handle. He would become very agitated. Uh, he himself had told her that he was afraid that he might hurt her and the yes. children, and, and he was getting worse and worse. Here's uh, the piano that Schumann used when he was in here, this room. Um, it's a the very old piano. instrument and... Yeah. Uh, this is where well, somebody heard him improvising and said how tragic it was. He's only like a puppet with his strings broken. Yes. Can but I play it? Yes, you may, you? but the uh, sound is off. Oh, no wonder he thought he had oral delusions. <laughs> Maybe he didn't. Rather incredible to be in this room. I mean, the thing that he spent two and a half years in basically this not very big room. No wonder. I mean, he deteriorated and deteriorated, and Clara didn't visit him until two days before he died. And eventually, he probably just starved himself to death. And he's so depressed and paranoid. By that. It's, a, it's a tragic thought. I shall come back soon. I shall come back cured.
So, yeah, he'd start out this cadenza with this grand kind of restative. G minor, which has hardly been in at all. It's like a magic key. It's like going to a new country. Isn't it? Now again, he feels home, right? Beckoning. Well, here I am at the end of my personal quest for the truth about Robert and Clara Schumann. I suppose I have to admit that my initial hostility towards Clara has softened a bit. It must have been hell for her to go through all those difficult times with Schumann. And of course, it's a complicated story. But I still find her cold and manipulative, and I don't feel she really understood either Schumann or her children. You've been getting very close, Herr Isolis. Am I going mad too? Well, since you seem to be here, could I ask you some questions about your late husband's music? Please. Well, of course, what interests me most is his music for my instrument, the cello. Of course, there's glorious passages for the cello and the orchestral music and the chamber music, it's wonderful. And then the pieces in folk style for cello and piano, which are charming. And then there's the concerto, which I love. I love the cello concerto. It's a great work. But then, I suppose what I'd really most like to ask you about is another set of pieces for cello that he wrote after the cello concerto. It's a set of romances for cello and piano that you actually destroyed. Remember, Herr Isselis, that these are Deeply painful memories that you are stirring up so blithely. I'm sorry, I do apologize. Herr Islis, you have absolutely no conception of the pure flame of love that is my feeling for the noble memory of my husband. If I felt it best not to allow ignorant eyes to fall on works conceived at a time of suffering and illness, then it was because I knew that he would have wanted it so. Yeah, but he, he was actually very fond of the romances, and so were Brahms and Joachim, so were you at the time. Schumann wanted them published, and he even wrote to, to Brahms from Endenich about them. <sighs> if you knew how I suffered, if you knew what I went through before each and every discussion concerning my late husband's work, you would not talk of such callous stupidity. Yeah, but that's quite a responsibility to take upon yourself, to, to rob the world of some of the last thoughts of one of the great composers. As a young man, you may not have lived long enough to understand this, but sometimes one must take drastic action in order to preserve the things that one loves most in life. 
If I destroyed some of my husband's work, it was because I knew that the flaws in those pieces would tarnish the reputation which we had so carefully built up together. Well, it's because of our hard work that you now recognize the mastery of some of those pieces. But in those days, perhaps they would have not been received so generously. And my Robert's place in history would have been less secure. But lots of the pieces were badly received at the time. I mean, you know, it's the music itself, although of course your work is wonderful, the way you propagated his early pieces in the 19th century, but it's the music itself that was going to survive anyway, because it's, it's so great, it's great music. And anyway, I'm sure for Schumann, success, applause wasn't that important. What was important was the quality of the work. Yes, Liz, I begin to lose patience with you. Would you think I am so foolish that before I burnt the original manuscript of the romances, I did not make sure that there was a fair copy safely held somewhere? You mean a copy really exists still? Well, the cello romances are safe, Herr Isilis. And one day, when the time is right, the world will discover them. I mean, somewhere, would there be anything else, sir? Oh, no, no, no. But how does one find them? Stay with us here on 4, a performance of Schumann's Cello Concerto is next. <laughs> 